Hi everyone, this is The Chess Puzzler. The game between these two gentlemen was very intense. Both played it very well until Luke got in trouble here after bringing his rook in on d1. Rook c1 would have been better because after the rook takes on b3, the rook can take on c5 and here, after the rook removes the pawn on b2, the position is still equal, despite Wesley's extra pawn. With rook d1, we have a different story. The rook still took on b3, and after d6, Wesley blocked through rook d3, and that pawn was going nowhere. If Luke takes on d3, e takes is catastrophic for him. Van Veghele can try d7 in the hope that he would be promoting any time soon or force Wesley to lose a piece. But here Wesley has two options. Firstly, he can easily block White's access to the 8th rank through bishop c7. But and there is a but here, this move is far inferior to this move, bishop takes b2. Should the pawn promote, the exchange will leave white with an extra rook, but 6 pawns against 3 pawns and a bishop a side, I am not sure how white is going to survive this, because after a4, bishop b6 trying to get rid of the c pawn, the c pawn just rolls and trying his last attempt to exchange with bishop d4, white has no answer to a3 and one of them pawns hits home either through this variation, bishop takes, pawn takes and the rook is powerless to do anything or even this variation, king f3, c3 and that bishop needs to be sacrificed because the end is near if he does not take. So with the exchange the rook is still unable to do anything and even with rook c1 the bishop can slide into b2 and it will be game over in two or so moves. Since this variation or variations do not work, after rook d3 d7 was played and Wesley, having taken his time, got the bishop back to c7 to block the promotion. Van Veghele tried b3 as a destruction. Wesley did not fall for it and went for b5. And though this seems quite fine on the surface, many engines will just not like it and this is the reason why. b5 will lead to rook c1 c4, b takes, and whether b takes or a direct b4, things are pretty much the same. The queenside pawns cannot advance so long that bishop can keep them in check once he finds f6. The alternative to b5 was this move, bishop to d8 to force the exchange. Of course, White can accept or reject. If he accepts, White is completely losing and simply Black can muscle through because he has too many strong pawns. If now Black rejects d8, he will need to play bishop f4 and he will get this line of play b6, g4, f takes and if White goes for the pawn he will get him but black can also attack the d-pawn with rook a7. So with king takes and rook takes, white is either going to trade in his rook or get him out of the way and possibly to b1 to protect his otherwise hanging pawn. However, none of these two options are good enough to keep black at bay. B5 was therefore equal to an extremely weak move, if not short of a blunder, but Luke's follow-up move was no better. 
Bishop e7 challenged the pawn and Wesley pushed to c4 and after the exchange the rook moved into c1. The rook took on d7 and here van Veli was forced to get his bishop out of the way and to a3 and the mist was beginning to clear up. With this position and with two extra pawns Wesley had the situation under control. Bishop e5 led to rook takes a4, rook c6 going after the pawn on g6 and Wesley having calculated well allowed this possible move by having attacked the bishop. Before Luke was able to hit on g6 he needed to first to get his bishop out of the way and did so with bishop c5 which in turn allowed a3 and should here from Veli have taken the pawn on a3 the game would still be equal. Very fast bishop takes and rook takes will leave rook g6 check and black loses substantially any real chance of getting through this game with a win. But instead of taking from Veli simply blunders because by taking on g6 with a check the king got closer and by retreating the rook to g5 this was it because a2 was not ugly but deadly. Luke did not give up and took on yet another pawn with a check. The king got closer and here is where he gave up his rook for a bishop. The game went on with bishop d4 and guess what? Wesley came in with an extremely powerful move and played something even many engines will have trouble finding and this move was rook takes d4 and here it was where the Dutch Grandmaster gave it up. This was not just a defeat for Luke but one that adds to his extremely bad performance on home soil. In four rounds he managed a draw and three consecutive losses and simply because he blundered time and time again in games where he was doing pretty well.